What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you five ways to cut the cost of your garden so it does not have to cost as much as people assume it does. You see, I hear all the time, Luke, if I had a million dollars, my garden would look as beautiful as yours. And I get that some of that is a over-exaggeration because I don't think anyone thinks in reality that this actually cost a million dollars. If it did, something went very wrong uh, in the whole budgeting scheme, but this did not cost a million dollars, far, far from it, as we'll talk about. But I do think it comes kind of from a rooted uh, assumption that gardening has to be expensive. And I do get that the topic of expenses is very widespread. I mean, you have people on all sides of the spectrum, and I get that. So when I'm talking about expensive, I guess I'm talking about the the broad sense of the term that I think most people would fall into. So when I'm talking about expensive, I will kind of preface this by saying that this entire garden, all beds, soil, mulch, all the materials included, only cost me $550. $550 for everything. So I get that that might be expensive for some people. I completely get that. But for as many raised beds as I have, the quality of soil that I have, and all the mulch and things around, all that considered, it's actually really not that bad. So I'm gonna share with you some ways to cut those costs using uh, kind of some methods that I've implemented here to hopefully get you guys growing uh, more high quality food for less money. Because gardening can be as expensive or inexpensive as you want it to be. I think that's the, the huge take home here is that it doesn't have to cost you uh, as much as you think it does because you don't have to line your beds with gold. You know, lining your beds with gold will not grow plants any better. Yes, your beds will be significantly more expensive, but the amount of money you put into something does not correlate to the results you're going to get. Um, you know, when it comes to gardening, uh, it really comes down to personal preference and how much work you're willing to put into it because if you're willing to put a lot of work in, a garden can be basically free. It's just sweat equity, just your time that you're putting in. So uh, keep that in mind that uh, you know, gardening can be as inexpensive or expensive as you want it to be. With that being said, like I said, all of our beds, including soil, were only $550. So I wanna share with you some of the things that we've done to lower that cost, because uh, I put out a poll on Instagram asking how much people thought uh, a single bed filled with soil cost me. And now I did have people, <laughs> I did have people that watched our channel, they know what we do, and they were, they were spot on. So I took some of that kind of into account. Uh, but the general consensus was that a single bed with soil cost me $150. $150 per bed. Now, would you believe me? And you should, because otherwise I wouldn't be making this video. <laughs> so would you believe me that a single bed with soil only cost me barely $40? Now I'll break down how I got that, but uh, it's very simple to do. And you can do it too. You can do it too. We have videos on how we did everything, but I'm going to share with you some of these cost saving tips that uh, you can implement and you can even make them even more inexpensive if you follow these tips. Again, it really comes down to how much work and how much effort you're willing to put in to cut cost. But if you are willing to cut cost, or you are willing to put in the effort to cut cost, you can do it. It is possible. So uh, with that being said, I want to share with you some of those tips because I want you all to get a garden started. I know especially right now, I've had a lot of people interested in starting a garden, but they assume that it costs so much money because from an outsider's perspective, it just seems very daunting and very expensive. And you only hear the stories about people saying it costs them a ton of money. I mean, there was a book written about it. Uh, there was a book written called The, uh, the $500 Tomato uh, or something like that. And it's a great book, but, um, <laughs> but it does not have to be that expensive. So uh, like I said, let's get, in, let's get uh, on into this video so I can share with you some of those things because I think, uh, I think you'll really be impressed at how much money you can save in a short period of time. The first thing I want to talk about is the lumber. So the lumber can be uh, as expensive or inexpensive as you want. You can go with a material like cedar, which is just insanely expensive, or you can go with something like an untreated pine. We went with untreated pine here, and untreated pine, uh, this 12 foot board here, it's a two by 12 by 12 foot board, ran us about 15 bucks. And, uh, and so, um, we got these, uh, we got each one of these boards for about $15. And then the end caps were also 12 footers, but we cut them into three foot sections. So, uh, we got 12 foot, 12 foot, three foot, and three foot, basically giving us 36 square feet of growable space. Where we got a discount was we bought in bulk. 
So we went to a lumber yard, not uh, like Lowe's or Home Depot. You can get lumber from there. But if you go to like your local lumber yard, generally you can ask them, if I buy over a certain amount, will you give me a discount? And uh, we went to a small family owned lumber yard and they actually did, they gave us a, uh, what they consider a builder's discount. And so they have contractor discounts if you buy in bulk. And so uh, the total would have been roughly about $650, $700 or so for all of the wood. But with that discount, we got it for about four, 450 or something like that. It was really inexpensive. So that included all the lumber for all the beds. The other way you can save some money is by going to places like uh, Habitat for Humanity. Um, going around to garage sales, uh, yard sales, um, going on Facebook Marketplace, a lot of people, um, they wanna get rid of their lumber. They inherit uh, an old barn that has, is filled with stuff and they just wanna clear it out. They wanna clear it out because they just bought the house, they just bought the barn and there's a ton of lumber in there that they don't know what to do with. And so uh, they, they'll put it out on free. Craigslist is another great place. Um, you can uh, look out there for those classified ads um, and you can, you can pick up free stuff. Um, I know a lot of people, a lot of people, uh, turn away free lumber because they, they think there's something wrong with it. But you know, you will get scraps. It's not like it's not always beautiful dimensional lumber. Sometimes one piece might be four feet, one piece might be 12 feet, the other piece might be 10 feet. You know, and just what I can say is just cut them down to size to where you have something you can make a square or a rectangle out of and you're fine, you're fine. They might not be, you know, the perfect shaped beds, but does that really matter when it comes to growing a garden? You know, if you want to gr grow a garden inexpensively, sometimes you have to forfeit the perfect ideal shape that you wanted for some cost, just some things to consider. The next thing that, that's gonna cut you a ton of cost is soil. Soil can be very expensive or very inexpensive depending on how you do it. I'll start with the most inexpensive option and that's using the soil that you have. If your soil is uh, adequate and, uh, you know, and you feel confident that the soil is not super hard clay, it's not filled with rocks and it's not super sandy, you know, assuming that it's got some moderately good uh, texture and, and uh, growability, um, <laughs> probably not a word, but let's just pretend it is. Um, <laughs> so assuming it has moderate growability, um, you, can, you can actually use that soil. In fact, up at our cottage garden, our soil was really, really, really nice. And so what we did is we put our raised beds down and then we just scooped up the soil with a, with a shovel, threw it in the, in the raised beds, and that's what we filled our raised beds with. We did not have to fill, we don't have to bring in any soil. In fact, we had a video on it that's in fact done super, super, super well, where we said we, how we filled uh, 20 raised beds without bringing in any additional soil. Um, people thought I was lying, but uh, no, it's, it's true. Just scraped up all the original soil, threw it inside the raised beds. We didn't pay a penny for soil. Assuming your soil is not good, what's the next best option? Well, the next, the next best option would have to be compost. Compost, uh, if you get it from a local municipal source, a lot of cities have compost piles that you can, uh, because you pay as a taxpayer for them to pick up yard waste, you can uh, get a discount on compost. Our town in particular has one and we can get compost, beautiful, rich, black compost. What's in all of our raised beds? <laughs> for $10 a yard. Now, each one of these raised beds here takes about two yards to fill up. And so that's roughly about $20 in compost. Um, now we do bring, we do make our own compost, um, on site and we do, uh, we did use a little bit of our native soil here. So all in all, our cost for soil here was, was right around 15, $20, uh, to fill these raised beds. Now, uh, you can go do that. That's another great option. It's compost because it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of places that have it, but do not get suckered into buying topsoil. And I'll tell you why a lot of topsoil is not Market, it's marketed as, a top, as topsoil, but it's not the quality that is required for a garden. What they do is they take all these building sites and uh, parking lots, anything that they're gonna uh, construct, and they'll, they'll basically just take a, a front end loader and they'll just scoop it up and then they'll put it into a, into a dump truck and they scrape that kind of one inch of soil. The problem is that one inch of soil has some fertility, but it also has a lot of clay, it has a lot of stones, um, if, even if it's sifted topsoil, it doesn't have that organic matter. It does not have that humus that makes it really rich and beautiful. Um, so, you know, yes, it's usually more inexpensive. It's usually cheaper than compost, but in terms of the quality to price, you're paying, you know, again, just the, the, amount, uh, the amount that you're paying more to get compost is 
is just peanuts compared to the quality that you're gonna get. So keep that in mind. Um, the next best option, if you cannot get compost, is to go out. It's, a, it's another uh, free or very inexpensive option, and that's finding composted manure. A lot of farmers, uh, they don't know what to do with all this stuff. They have cows, sheep, goats, chickens, alpaca, farm animals. Um, and those farm animals, uh, horses, uh, <laughs> they have animals that uh, every, every animal poops. And so they don't know what to do with all of that manure. And so they just kind of pile it up and let it age. And uh, a lot of times they'll give it to people for free. Now it's sweat equity. A lot of farmers will have you pull up your, your trailer, you load it yourself and, uh, and get on your way. Um, some farmers, if they're very kind, will uh, they'll get their front end loader out and they'll dump it in, in for you. Um, we've had that happen before. We got some for our, our cottage garden and um, you know just brought out a front end loader, still free, didn't cost us anything. Um, the guy was just nice enough to, uh, to do that. But generally they'll have you kind of load it up yourself. Um, but even if it's, you know, even if it's uh, a farmer that wants to sell it, it's usually Five dollars a load, ten dollars a load. It's super inexpensive. I mean, it's just really inexpensive. Um, as much as you could fit in your the back of your truck for five bucks, or uh, as much as you could fit in the back of your trailer uh, for five ten bucks, it's worth it. It really is. The final thing that I did want to talk about in a ways to cut costs, since those are the two big things, are the the raised beds and the compost. The final thing that I wanted to talk about were plants. Now, when you're looking at plants, people they go to their local greenhouse or their, uh, their big box store, um, and they see plant starts for like $2.50, $3 a plant. I'm sorry, but there is no way I'd ever be caught dead paying $2.50 or $3 a plant. I just wouldn't. Unless, of course, I am in dire need of a plant, I will not be caught dead buying a, one of those plants. Um, so what I would prefer you to do is to start from seed. Now, it doesn't matter what seed you're going with. There's tons of seed suppliers out there, but I recommend finding a seed supplier that you like and starting from seed. We always advocate starting from seed because when you buy a packet of seeds for anywhere from 99 cents to $3 a pack, it's still less, that packet of seeds is still less than a single start. And so you're gonna save so much money by starting from seed, no question about it, just no question. And those are the three things that you can do and the rest of the stuff is kinda just, it's, uh, it's not really, uh, to write home about. You know, our mulch, if you're worried about mulch being expensive, contact your local uh, tree company. Um, they mulch up trees all the time. They don't know what to do with the stuff. So they have uh, something called Chip Drop. You can also just call them. Chip Drop is a website you can sign up uh, for, a, uh, for a tree company to drop them off at your, at your door. But just call around. Just call around and say, hey, do you have any wood chips around? And uh, a lot of times they do. They'll bring them to your house. You can't always guarantee the quality of them, but you're gonna get free wood chips, so those don't have to cost you anything. And then in terms of, uh, you know, in terms of things like um, plant supports and, uh, you know, actual like growing material, we have lots of videos on how to do those things for cheap, but uh, I'd recommend checking them out. I mean, we have cattle panel trellises, we have uh, tomato steaks. Those cost, you know, one or $2 a piece compared to uh, the, the big tomato cages that cost three or $5 a piece. We're saving money there by growing on a, on a wooden furring strip. Um, you know, the cattle panel trellises. Don't spend, don't spend $50, $90 for a, an arbor. Make an arbor yourself out of a cattle panel. We have videos on that. It costs 25 bucks, so inexpensive. So you don't have to spend as much money as you think. And I really do hope that this video kind of helped to highlight some of those ways you can save money. And I also do hope that you, uh, that you start a garden. If you have not yet started a garden, now is the best time to start a garden. And I'm so excited, I'm so reassured about our future when I see so many young people my age contacting me and say, hey, you know, I'm a new homeowner, my girlfriend and I, my, my wife and I, you know, we're looking at putting in a garden. We're looking at growing our own food and getting connected with food. That excites me. That just gets me out of bed in the morning and uh, just puts a fire under my butt to get these videos out. So thank you guys so much for that. Thank you for your support. Thank you for always checking in and just uh, seeing how I'm doing and, uh, and, and just, wanting the best for this channel. So thank you so much. It means so much to me. And uh, with that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you uh, learned something new. Hopefully you're growing bigger, growing home. And we'll catch you all later. See ya. Bye.